Today in this continuation of my Sub-D demo on modeling a futuristic electric crossover SUV. As you can see, I've, I've got the body side pretty well dialed in. And so now I'm going to start to uh, manage the surface transitions in the hood area. A controlled gap. And I'm going to actually weld those points together. But I'm starting to cut away the front graphic. As you can see on the sketch, there's a, there's a really strong corner element to the lighting. The main headlamps have this very, very strong vertical element which forms the corner. So I'm going to start to lay that out in my Sub-D structure. So using the edge cut tool, I'm starting to manage the corner transition. Now I'm going to cut away where this vertical element of the headlamp is going. So now I'm going to start to delineate this very strong corner graphic element. Being that this is an electric car, it's not going to have the traditional grille. It's going to be dominated much more by the lighting graphics and then to have a fairly smooth, simple section going through the main center of the vehicle. So I've designed the, the lower part of the front end as, as kind of a boat hull. Just this very smooth aerodynamic quality with these very strong uh, graphic elements on the sides of the front end. It's going to air scoops uh, leading into maybe some brake cooling or battery cooling. So now I have the basic graphic laid out in topology in polygons. Now I'm starting to lay out the character line of the hood, which runs right into that front corner. That's starting to look like the sketch. I'm just spending a lot of time aligning my geometry so that all of the lines and all of the graphic elements start to flow together really nicely. So my, my wheel arches, my lighting, my fascia, all of it flows together really nicely. So it's just a lot of like just quick, simple editing of points to get everything flowing just right. So now you can see the structure is all there, but it's very, very soft. I want to start to get some additional definition, so I'm going to add some edge loops to get that really nice structured quality to the graphic. Now here in the upper corner of the headlamp, that's a bit of a difficult area to resolve because um, I, I want to try to maintain a very smooth surface where it's cut away. As you can see, there's a bit of a wrinkle there where the, the top corner of the headlamp is. So I'm just doing some local um, edge cuts to see if I can manage that, that corner, that corner surface uh, in such a way that it looks like you have this lamp that's cut away from a smooth surface and there's no, no real break in, in terms of tangency. I'm also getting the hood character line looking pretty good by adding additional edge cuts. So now that I have the graphic I want, I'm going to start adding uh, some additional sub-D surfaces just behind the fascia to, to start to black out the, uh, the hole so that you read it as a strong graphic element and you don't read it, you don't see through the hole going into the interior of the vehicle. So I'm just creating a, a sub-D surface to sort of block out that, that view of, of the interior of the vehicle through the front end. Okay, so now I have 
the main graphic filled in really nicely. And I'm going to spend some time on this lower air splitter, this lower air dam. This is a really important part of making the car feel tough and protective, but also aerodynamic. I'm just getting the wheel arches and the lower splitter to intersect with each other in a nice, cohesive way. Now adding a uh, pedestrian air splitter. This, this is a, a feature that many cars have which, which helps to deflect the pedestrian on impact so that the pedestrian sort of flops onto the hood instead of going underneath the vehicle. And it also provides some aerodynamic benefit as well in terms of downforce. You'll see this on many cars, but it, but it just gives it that you know, very sporty, very protective look. And then I'm going to add my lighting elements. So I'm going to have these sort of floating blades of LED lighting within the, the main lamp graphic. I want these, these light blades to form the corner graphic of the vehicle and to be a very strong element. I'm adding a bit of thickness uh, just so it has a bit of dimension. Adding some edge loops so that there's a bit of crispness to it. So now I'm gonna duplicate this blade feature and cut away the back portion. Then I'm gonna give it a white non-reflective flat shader. And in Gravity Sketch, that gives it the impression of being illuminated. Now I'm going to add an additional illuminated element across the front of the vehicle. So this prominent horizontal graphic element flanked by these two very strong vertical elements which form the corners of the vehicle is going to be the main graphic. So now I'm going to add a pillar element. So this is going to be a singular uh, rail running from the A pillar all the way through to the C pillar. And this is really going to start to give some uh, character to the greenhouse of the vehicle. I've used the thicken tool to give it a bit of dimension, a bit of thickness, but it also can, helps me to control the offset. So you can see that there's a nice even offset from the glass surface to the pillar surface. And that's how I get the sort of definition of glass and body to look really precise. The Thicken tool is really convenient for, for that. As you can see now, I've given it a contrasting color, so it's not, it's not body color, it, and it, it graphically blends in with the, uh, the glass. Now I'm gonna make a wheel. Using polar symmetry, I'm setting it to number five, which means five spokes. I'm going to pick my reflective silver. I'm going to set my axis. And I'm going to start to sketch some wheels using the volume brush. I, I love the volume brush when it comes to wheels because it gives you so many cool surprises when it comes to the shape of the spokes. And it's so easy to edit in real time. So this is going to be an, a very aerodynamic wheel, so there's going to be a secondary spoke element which fills in most of the space between the main spokes, again, to, to maintain maximum aerodynamic efficiency. But also gives the impression that the wheel is, is reading really big. And as you can see, I'm just, just experimenting and looking at different ways of proportioning those spokes so that everything you know, fits together, flows together really nice. I love using the volume tool with polar symmetry to do wheels. It's, it's, there's so much fun to experiment. So now I've set my polar symmetry to level 12 and I'm going to do some tire tread. You know, given that this is a, a crossover electric SUV, I think that tire tread is, is a really important detail to give it that sense of, of ruggedness. 
So I've set polar symmetry to 12, and now I'm just starting to lay out some blocks of tire tread. You can see very quickly the tire is taking on this slightly rugged, but still very sporty character. So now I'm going to select the entire wheel, duplicate it, and shift it to the rear wheel. And it's all grouped together. So in part four, we're going to work out the details of the rear end and do any last revisions to the body surfacing in order to get the best possible surface quality and line quality.